with my co-host Ayana Lipio. Hi so, everyone. And we are licensed professionals with a track record of assisting individuals from various walks of life across Canada. So we've made our mission to help Canadians navigate your financial landscape with obviously confidence and clarity. So that's why we are here. So we'll explore a wide range of financial myths and misconceptions that would probably or that can hold you back from achieving your financial goals. Goals. So from uh, the more income means you get wealthier or maybe two credit cards are evil. So we'll tackle these common misconceptions head on and give you practical advices that you can apply to your own financial journey. So get ready to challenge the status quo one myth at a time. All right, so we'll dive in. Our topic for today is if my spouse or family member dies, their debt comes to me. Mm. Okay. And so just a disclaimer or disclosure, while we are licensed in life insurance and your license in securities, so we are not legal professionals. So our expertise is limited to those areas. And any information provided should not be considered legal advice. So for any legal matters, please make sure, please consult a qualified, qualified attorney. Okay. And so you have probably already been in debt several times, right? So what is debt actually? Maybe some listeners that we have now, they are just probably starting with um, maybe studying in college, university, mm -hmm. or they, they don't know the idea of how to be in debt or why does adult say um, I am in debt or you know paycheck to paycheck <laughs> right so <laughs> what is actually debt we'll well start. debt is in all honesty you owe you owe something to someone of monetary value okay so a lot my first introduction to debt Anjali was when I went to school I I had to carry a student loan I and at the same time when I School, I mean, like university, okay? like you're now above age of majority. And 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 also my my other introduction was because of there was a stations in university. I don't know if you did you go to university? You went to university here in Canada, college. correct? Yeah, college. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So they had they were giving uh, there's booths like different in financial institutions. They have booths around university during like the first few weeks. Okay, uh, or like freshman week or whatever. Uh, and they have booths and they were giving away free pens and notebooks and some giveaway cookies. As long as you sign up for their credit card. <laughs> Who doesn't want a free cookie though? <laughs> that should be the best cookie in Canada. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how you learn about debt in general. Right, uh, you can you get exposed to it, but very little on how it truly works, and you kind of find out how it works later on in our lives. I mean, like you that that you gotta pay your debt actually. <laughs> that now it's not it's not that's when the adulting comes in mind. Hashtag adulting is like okay, now I have to pay my student loan off now. Hey, you know the money that I borrowed that I didn't really have now I gotta pay it off. You you learn it the hard way. Actually, it, and it's not just the starting point of when you would start with your career. So mine, actually, I didn't know that it's actually debt. Um, I used to lend my sister's money. <laughs> and obviously, Wait, you lend your sister's money. You're not, it's not even your lend, own money or you're lending oh, wait, your sister I'm money. I'm lending my sister money. There you oh, go. okay. I was right like, word. wow, that's smart. <laughs> so using, else, using someone else's money. Okay. Okay. Another sorry. Idea. Sorry. I just need to clarify. <laughs> Another another idea for our listeners, but yes. Yeah, so I didn't know that's that. So the reason why they uh, they borrowed money from me is obviously mm. they wanted to buy something like clothes or shoes. Of course. And obviously, I would ask them. Okay, you told me you can pay me at this month or at this week. Where is it? And I didn't know <laughs> that's the way that that comes right or that that happens. Mm, right. Yeah. <laughs> And some exactly. people might have experienced that, but they don't know. It's it's maybe it's their lunch money when they were younger. Yeah. Right. And exactly. 
And <laughs> that is true. But then you don't, you probably didn't charge interest. So zero no percent. Wow. <laughs> Can I borrow some money from you then? <laughs> and sometimes it's just, okay, I'm so tired, you know, and I'm just going to let it go. Okay, that's free yeah. now. <laughs> but obviously that doesn't work in like the real debt, right? When you borrow money to, well, where, where can they borrow money? Well, of course, um, institutions, government, correct. bank, right? Yeah, and, correct. Um, what are the types of debt? Yeah, that's right. So there's two different types of debt. It's either you have a good debt versus a bad debt. Good debt means that, uh, let's say a student loan. Yes, it's terrible to pay for it. But then essentially, that should give you more income once you finish school. So it should appreciate in value. But some of us, perhaps we go to school, we got a student loan, but we never practice what we went to school for. Exactly. Or can't get a job into that field. Uh, uh, or let's say uh, your any assets, maybe your investment loans that will appreciate over time, let's say an RSP loan that should appreciate over time that will then give you more back. So those are kind of anything that puts money into your pocket. Yes, more okay. money in the future self. So. Yes, so that's good debt. Uh, you're taking money out now uh, in, in the hopes that you will get more later on in your life. Bad debt means that it's a depre uh, it will take money out of your pocket. It's a depreciating asset, i.e., let's say a car loan. Yes, a car is a necessity here in Canada. We all need to get to point A, point B. It's much faster. Uh, however, a car, the brand new car depreciates over time. So you can't sell, let's say you bought a $50,000 car. Mm -hmm. Can you sell it for the same amount in 10 years from now? Nope, not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. As soon as it leaves the lot, your brand new spanking new car is now 10000 less in terms of value. So, and then you could also look at, is your, is mortgage a good debt or a bad debt? A, a lot of time, like when you think about it, good debt takes puts money in and bad debt puts money out. So if you and buy a brand new home, aka a mortgage, now you have a mortgage for 25 or 30 years, is that putting more money into your pocket or taking more out? I think I would say it would still depend of if they can actually put in like their income. Yeah, a lot of times uh, people like live a but house poor life, right? And because everyone wants to get into home, but you can kind of, if it's taking money out and, or let's say you sold your home for less of what you got it for because you're going to get, you need to get rid of it. Well, now it becomes a bad debt. Yeah. It's there you so, go. so, yeah, depending so on those the kind situation. of depreciate, yes, exactly. Yes. So, that's kind of to differentiate. Takes it, does it take money out or puts money in? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And so, going back to the topic, obviously, in debt, it comes with uh, you know, the emotions, right? Yes, um, it's, it's really rare for someone to never have money problems. And for example, if spouse or family member mm -hmm. dies, mm -hmm. then it's just something else it's different kind of experience of being Correct. vulnerable at that time and then imagine sudden suddenly um his or her bank would call you or actually harass mm. you and Correct. ask you to pay for the remaining debt right mm -hmm. sometimes it's overwhelming yes. and what do you think about that do you think that their debt would they would actually need to pay for their debt when they're passed when they pass away it depends it's uh the question is is it a joint debt uh, or did you co-sign that debt with that person or whatnot? But if it's an individual debt, uh, basically it gets deducted off. If they owe anything, it gets deducted off their estate. If the estate has no value, in all honesty, well, the creditors take a loss. Mm -hmm. It's like simple put. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Easiest way to answer. <laughs> yeah. So basically if it's a, if, if, if your spouse have their own credit card mm -hmm. or not connected to it at all, then that is your spouse's credit card. But if it's a joint credit card, now the creditors could technically, like, that is also your debt. Okay. Or let's say uh, someone, let's say the person that passes away uh, 
has bad credit and needed help to get a car loan. So then someone else co-signed for him. Mm -hmm. Then now the co-signer is liable for that debt. So when if that person passes away, he will then pay for that. Like the creditors can legally go after you. But right. if it's individual, you can't. Can you goodbye. <laughs> well, yeah, they it has whatever his estate it will be, like the total, the debt mm -hmm. will be deducted off that. But if there's no money in the estate, well, they can't go after <laughs> can't... anything. <laughs> yeah, they may call though. It's quite st stressful matter. Yeah. I've seen um I've not really passed away, but like separation or kind of like divorce. Yeah, divorce mm -hmm. uh, that could also get kind of messy uh, when it comes to that. Or let's say you and your partner have been common law for a while and then you are now you got you have debt together and then now separated, then technically they could still go after you. Yeah, as long as you're as long as you're connected. But if you're not connected, then say la vie. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I hope. Yeah. <laughs> That's 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 basically the 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 debunking of that myth, right? So it's essential to know the difference between whatever you have if it's if it's a joint one or if it's an individual or if exactly you co-sign with someone. Usually, if it's a family member or friends relatives, usually they would say, "Okay, can you just sign this and this and that," but not really explain, and they don't yeah. know the consequences. Um, mm -hmm. So just make sure that any agreement or any contract that you sign, make sure. Yeah, to highly it. recommend it. It doesn't matter if it's family. Yes. Just so true. you know. <laughs> All right. That's it for today. And as we r wrap up today's myth-busting journey, remember your financial story is like a book. You're, you are the author and don't let outdated myths write the chapters. So make your money work hard as you do. So where savings are secure, investments are smart, and financial freedom is the grant for now. So if you want to connect with us, you have our LinkedIn, so you can also follow us on Instagram again. My name is Angeli Mondronedo, and I'm with Ayana Alipio. See you soon. See you next week. Bye, everyone. See you next week.